What's going on everybody out there? Hope this video finds you well. We're going back into the time machine. We're going to the feed eight candidates. Round 10, I believe. Versus uh, Lev Aron uh, this is Lev Aronian with the white pieces versus Vasily Avanchuk with the black pieces. This is a famous game that took place in 2013. And I picked this game to analyze today because of the surprise value of the opening. And I tell you, you can't judge a book uh, by its cover. Uh, this is a very, uh, very interesting uh, game. And uh, let's get right into it. Remember, Chess Audiobooks is on Lee Chess, Chess.com, Instagram, and Twitter. So check me out. D4 from Aronian, Knight of Six, C4. What do you think is coming up? Yes, it is not a mistake. We had the Budapest defense at the candidate's level of chess, right? Very high level. This is not just uh, some blitz game, some rapid in an obscure location in Europe. But this is uh, potentially uh, to choose someone who is going to face the future world champion. And Avanchuk goes with the Budapest of course, it does not have the most stellar reputation at top levels, but why is Avanchuk playing it here? Because the opening is a great uh, surprise weapon, right? With all the preparation, with all the engine usage, you think that GMs are really taking the time to um, really work out the intricacies of this opening. No, they're looking at Nimzo Indian defense, Queens Indian, Kings Indian, Slav, right? Queens Gambit declined. They're looking at those opening. They're not looking at you know, Albin Counter Gambit. They're not looking at the Budapest. So psychologically fantastic choice for uh, Ivanta, right? And the opening is not uh, that bad to where Black is just going into a force, force loss. For example, knight g4, knight of three. Of course, there's uh, different responses that black, excuse me, that white can play. But Aronian is going to play probably the oldest response, right? A tried and tested uh, response, which is just bishop f4 holding on to the pawn, challenging uh, black's entire idea, saying, hey, you can't get that pawn on um, e5 back. Bishop b4 check. Of course, bishop c5 is a, a, a well-known option also. Knight c3, bishop takes, and b takes c3. Now, what do we have here in the opening? All right, what does black have to justify uh, this early um, gambit here? Well, black has uh, provoked white into... Uh, creating some substantial pawn weakness on the queen side of the board. Look at those double pawns on the C file. And look at that isolated pawn on the A file. Alright. So the price that Black has paid is he's given up the bishop pair quite early in the game. And he is also down a pawn. <clears throat> Black is hoping that his, his rapid development... All right, um, and this pristine pawn structure will eventually allow him to equalize either by getting the pawn back at some point or even being able uh, to mount a successful attack against the king. All right, but black is really banking on that with all this pawn weakness that white eventually will have to give, up, give back the pawn and be in a worse position afterward. Right? This is the gamble. White, on the other hand, is saying, hey, I have the bishop here and open lines. And this will allow me to be able to attack uh, white. Excuse me, attack black. Queen e7. Putting more pressure on the pawn there. Queen d5. And now f6. So now the opening becomes a true gambit. E takes f6, and now knight takes f6, gaining time on the queen. 
but at the same time eliminating the spearhead on e5 which was hindering uh, white's develop uh, black's development queen d3 d6 g3 playing leaning on putting the bishop on the uh, long diagonal on g2 castles bishop g2 bishop g4 castles rook a e8 and you can see after rook a e1 both sides have completed their development and this is a uh, main tabia of uh, the position here and as you can see black has exactly what he want wanted and white has what he wanted all right so white has uh this disrupted pawn structure on the queen side however he has uh nice uh solid protection around this king in form of this fin kettle bishop pair open uh diagonals and open uh files all right so this is a definite definitely a position that is conducive to bishop the bishop pair here right as opposed to having a, a pair of knights all right so that's good uh for white however black uh has uh these double pawns that he can work on and he has the uh c5 square that he can settle a knight on and he also has a semi-open e file a semi-open f file where he can um hope to mount an attack from king h8 getting off the uh, light square diagonal this is a common move in such positions because sometimes that check on d5 can come at a really inconvenient time you can see that in other uh, openings with a similar pawn structure such as the dutch defense so for example if you could put a pawn on f5 a dark pawn a um, black pawn on f5 and you have uh, basically a Dutch defense uh, pawn structure. Or you can think of it like that. Knight d4 from Aronian already threatening uh, to win the, uh, win another pawn at uh, b6. By uh, taking twice. I'm sorry, by taking twice on c6. So winning the pawn there. Knight e5 from Vanchuk. Bishop takes e5, d takes e5, so some pieces are going to come off the board. And now black has um, gotten right, gotten white to get rid of his bishop here. Knight f5, bishop takes f5, queen takes f5, and now knight d7. And you can see that black is uh, black is pretty much uh, equalized here, almost, except he's just down down a pawn still. Queen e4, the, the um, queen was attacked, and now this is a critical decision here from Vanchuk. He plays c6, which uh, blocks the action of the bishop and queen, of course, on g2. Um, but another move that has to be considered is b6, which just completely uh, takes the um, the pawns off the light squares. Period. So that. There is no way now or in the future that that light square bishop would be able to attack those pawns. However, in the event of say b6, for example, then uh, white has to worry. I'm sorry, black has to worry um, at some point about the penetration into these squares, and then the subsequent uh, coming attack on these pawns. So with that in mind, um, Avanchuk decides to play this way. But you'll see, uh, you know, some variations that it might be better to play b6. Moving on, rook d1. And now the move knight b6. Rook d3. This is an important move here because not only does it, it threaten to double up on the d file with the rooks, uh, at some point... It's nice to have the rook on the third rank as the rook will be very uh, flexible on the third rank. Just imagine, if you will, the advance of this pawn g4 at some point, And then the rook can go to h3. Without a knight here on f6, this pawn on h7 is very uh, weak. Play continued. Queen c5. With the attack on the C pawn, of course. Alright, as black starts attacking the weaknesses. But also, it 
it stops White from being able to double his rooks for the time being because of the attack on F2. So Queen H4. And this is a strong move also because it prevents Black from being able to contest the D file. Because the rook is on D3 and the queen on H4 uh, control the D8 square. So Vanchuk decides to make some uh, room for his king and plays the move G6. Another option is queen takes C4. And let me show you why that wasn't played. So if queen takes c4, queen takes c4, knight takes c4. All right, going to the end game, but it's not that favorable for black. As you can see, rook d7 happens. And then let's say rook b8. And this is where you get in trouble. By having the pawns on the light squares, now d6 is not a good defense because of bishop takes c7. Whereby, if you had this structure earlier, you know, with the pawn on b6, then you could choose a different defense. So let's say rook b8, rook b1. Again, b6 not really being an option, so knight b6. Rook e7, attacking the pawn. And you can see that that the activity, the activity of white, uh, the harassment uh, that white is able to... Um, you know, due to black, right, gives him the better position. So rook f8, for example, rook takes, rook takes, then a4 with the idea a5. And this is just annoying. And then, and in this position, the bishop is stronger than the knight. <clears throat> so back to the game. So g6 was played. Bishop e4 with a threat of bishop takes g6. So king g7, king g2, and now queen takes c4. All right, so it looks like, you know, Avantuck, you know, has done a good job. He's gotten his pawn back, and he has a pawn in the center of the board. So uh, black has uh, pretty much equalized the game in the opening his, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, he's taking an opening that's, you know, whatever kind of unsound, if you will. And, uh, he's made it work. And that is due to the, uh, the surprise element of the opening. There's no way that, uh, Aronian pro possibly could have been prepared for this. He just played, you know, probably what he knew from years ago, uh, years before this time. And, you know, it's just playing on, you know, just, you know, it's just talent versus talent in this, uh, in this uh, particular scenario. They're just playing chess at this point. There's no, you know, 30 moves of theory that they're, um, you know, that they're using right now. So Rook FD1. Queen takes A2. And Aventuk is uh, now up material, but he has to be very careful because the king exposure... Is something that he has to worry about. G4. Now remember what I said earlier about this rook. Now being very flexible. Having the option to travel along the third rank. So rook f4. And now bishop f5. Again with this, these ideas of uh, rook to d7. Knight d5, blocking it off. Rook h3. Issue on h7. So, rook h8. Which is uh, kind of passive. And now e3, hitting the, um, the rook. And here, uh, Avancek just uh, blunders. And time trouble. And so, after e3, g takes f f5 and e takes f4. So I pretty much, um, at this point, he was already uh, busted here. Um, rook h8. And what he should have played is this move h5. Exploiting the fact that the pawn on g4 cannot capture. 
And then let's say e3. Rook f8. E takes. And then knight takes f4 check. King h1. Knight takes h3 check. And the game is going to end probably in a draw. Um, you know, and this is just a sample line of how the game uh, pro probably should have ended. So that game was a little uh, frustrating in that it seemed like it didn't go to its logical conclusion because uh, Van Chuck truly did play, um, you know, a great game. And I enjoyed the fact that he surprised his opponent with this offbeat opening. And then uh, he just, you know, he just blew it in the end, used too much time on the clock. And then wind up um, blundering in time trouble after obtaining um, uh, equal uh, position. So anyway, that is it uh, for uh, today's game. I hope you enjoyed that. Please get in the comment section uh, below. Remember, I'm on uh, chess.com and Lee Chess. And uh, check the links below for DVD slash videos relating to this opening. And I will see you guys soon on the next video.